Hey everybody, long time no see. I realize I haven't made a video in a while, but I figured I'd release this one just to update you on a few things. So, first off, Gary, i.e. Bossman103, i.e. Phony Beetle Maniacs, should be in Toronto sometime this week. I think he arrives on Wednesday. We'll meet up at some point, and we are going to discuss... Transformers 4, Age of Extinction, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The Michael Bay produced movie, that is. We've both seen them. We think both are pretty awful. I think he hates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles more. I think I hate Age of Extinction more. But, I mean, we're essentially arguing about which one's the bigger piece of shit, so... <laughs> It might be amusing. I actually did finally end up watching Batman and Robin. I had never seen the entire thing straight through before, and <laughs> it's freaking hilarious. It's freaking hilarious in how bad it is, but it's freaking hilarious just the same. Uh, I thought about filming it and posting it, but I honestly didn't feel up to it at the time, so sorry guys. However, if you have any other bad movies that you think it would be fun for me to watch and, you know, post a reaction to, like I'm thinking of doing Revenge of the Fallen, watching that one again. I've only seen it once in the theater, and I just remember it being bad. Ooh, hate that film. But if you can think of any other ones that... You might want me to film a reaction video, too. Like, I don't think I'm going to watch Batman and Robin again. And frankly, that one's just too funny to do, like, a serious thing like I did with Dark of the Moon. Oh, God, Dark of the Moon's so bad. Still not... I'm still not over. Yeah, yeah, it's been over a year, and I'm still not over that stupid line where he or misuses the quote... From Wrath of Khan. That was just... Fuck you, Mike. Fuck you, Michael Bay. The last thing I want to talk about. So, so far this year, to date, I have seen 44 films. So at the end of the year, I, I'm not going to do the the pop song list again. That, that There are other people who do that much better. But I've seen enough movies that I think I can come up with a definitive list. I'm probably going to split it up into... These are the ones I hate... These are the ones that are in the middle and, you know, maybe aren't worth mentioning. And then these are the ones I really think people should probably go see. But, along that line, I wanted to discuss at least what I look for in a film. What I look for when I give a film a rating, I usually give a film a rating on my Facebook page anyway, between 0 and 10. 0 being, I hated this film with every fiber of my body. R.I.P.D would have had this rating had I used this system last year. And just to give you perspective, I know I rag on Man of Steel a lot, but Man of Steel would probably have been like a three and a half, four. In, in other words, it has at least some redeeming features, but overall I just fucking... That movie still pisses me off. But I can at least recognize there are good parts in it. Uh, a film that would have got a ten... The ten's like my absolute favorite films of all time... The one that comes immediately to my mind is something like Raiders of the Lost Ark. I just love that film. Uh, I think it was like the fir one of the first major releases I ever saw that wasn't like a kid's movie. And to this day, I can watch that just nonstop. I love that film so much. Um, there have been some very good films this year. I've given, I think there, th I have three right now that are at 9.5 and several at 9. So, look for some good films. But with that said, if you actually look at my list, you'll find that if the critics like it, I tend to like it. If the critics don't like it, I tend to not like it. And if you look at the Rotten Tomatoes score, my, they match up fairly well. Some are a little higher, some are a little lower. I don't vary much from the norm very much, and that's kind of boring, I guess. But what I will say is this. If I actually do disagree with the common rating, I will say so. And I want to talk about one of those films right now. And that film happens to be the best-reviewed film of the year. Boyhood. I hated 
this film. Hated it, hated it, hated it. Now, I know a lot of critics will go and say, oh, it's so well constructed. And then when they analyze the film, they'll say, oh, the shots flow very well, it's beautiful, looks beautiful, it's well acted. Yes, on some level, I do look at that stuff when I see a film. I did take one, I will stress this, one course in film analysis when I was in university. And, yeah, I saw a lot of films. I like watching films. Obviously, I've seen so many of them. But what kills a film for me is if I am bored out of my mind. And that usually means I can't relate to either the story or the characters. And in Boyhood, I have to be honest, I can admit it's an ambitious project. I can admit it's actually fairly well acted for the most part. I think the daughter was a little weak, some of the supporting characters were a little weak, but the main characters, uh, Patricia Arquette, Ethan Hawke, even, I'm probably going to mispronounce his name, I, uh, Coltrane, that's, I just remember his last name, I don't remember his first name. The boy they follow. They're all pretty good actors. The boy, particularly, is kind of surprising, considering he was six when this, they started filming this. And he actually turns out to be a pretty decent little actor. Gotta give him credit for that. Problem is, as a character, I hated that little shit. Gotta be honest. And since I think the movie was trying to say, hey, I should sympathize with this kid... It means I'm completely disconnected from the movie. The, the, the character I sympathized most with, and this is only to a point, was Patricia Arquette, the, the mother. And really, that's just because I kind of sympathize with her dating a secession of assholes. You know, somebody dates a secession of assholes, you're, and they seem to be an otherwise pretty decent person, you do kind of have to feel for them. But the kid... No, I'm sorry, I don't. Really, when it comes right down to it, when I was watching this film, I was thinking, okay, this is kind of interesting. But then it kind of dawned on me, all I'm really doing here is watching 12 years worth of home videos. And now it's obviously better shot quality than that. Cinematography is perfectly fine. I won't say amazing, but it's fine. And when you don't really like the subject of the home videos, it's like going over to somebody's house, watching three hours worth of these videos, oh, spans 12 years, and then realizing, I don't think I like you guys as much as I thought I did. And, oh, can I, as I said, I sympathize with Patricia Arquette's character. Can we talk about her husband's? She has three of them in the film. One of them starts off, I think they were married at some point. Uh, Ethan Hawke and her, they divorced. But apparently, they're, they're still on speaking terms, so it's just, okay, this didn't work out. We had different directions for our lives, whatever. <sighs> One of the first scenes in the film is her going to a, I believe it was a psychology course, and she's kind of flirting with the professor, and I'm looking at this like, oh no, don't tell me that she's going to end up marrying this guy. He's going to turn out to be an asshole, and then they're going to get divorced again. Yep, that is exactly what happens. And why is he an asshole? It's because he turns out he's an alcoholic. Now, Ethan Hawke's character, most other characters in this film drink at some point, but they single this guy out as an as a violent alcoholic, and we're supposed to, and we hate him for that. And y yeah, rightly so, we should hate him. But it was so cliche that the guy seemed to be an alcoholic, and our first indication that something is wrong with him is he stops by the liquor store to pick up liquor, and then hides it. But we see other people drinking, so why is that's the trigger for him? And then, of course, they break up, and it's kind of messy, and, you know, other people get involved, and child, I'm not sure if it's Child Protective Services, but one of her friends comes and helps her get, get the kids away. 
And good, yeah, good for them. This is early on in the film. This is when I was still with the film a little bit. And then she gets remarried to another guy who initially seems to be fine. And then how do they show that he's an asshole? He's sitting up front waiting for Mason to come home and drinking a beer. So the signal that both these guys are assholes is that they're drinking. Why? And in fact, why is he outside waiting for Mason? Because Mason broke his curfew. This kid, I'm not saying the guys aren't the, the fathers that the, the, you know, step-parents, the stepfathers that the mother marries aren't assholes. They are. But, okay, Mason is called out to go with his father and he's not finished Clean up the backyard, and the, fa the step first stepfather makes it clear that, hey, when you're back, when you're back tomorrow, you're going to clean up, finish cleaning up the rest of the backyard. Why is that? A, that's portrayed as being something unreasonable, but why? The kid had chores to do. He didn't do chores. Yeah, okay, okay you can go. Just finish up. <laughs> and the second stepfather... Yeah, he came back late, and he just gets chewed out a little bit and whatever. The kid's an asshole. He's a privileged asshole who never really has to pay for any of his mistakes. Why am I supposed to sympathize with this kid? I, I freaking hated this film, and I want to talk about the ending a little bit. So he graduates from high school. There's like they, his parents have a party for him. As I said, Patricia Arquette and Ethan Hawke they seem to get along. Ethan Hawke remarried. He actually started off as kind of like this cool father, absentee father type, and then he remarries and becomes like the stern parent figure. He actually, you know, had some character development, even though he went from kind of interesting, cool guy into dull, just like everybody else. But it's development, and you can see how it happened. He, Mason just stays this little douchebag asshole the entire time and fucking hating him. And yet I get the impression that we're supposed to sympathize with this kid. No, I don't. Anyway, uh, so graduation party, he packs up his stuff, puts it into the, puts it into his truck, drives away, and I'm thinking, okay, film's going to end right now. No, it doesn't. He's driving away into college. Film should be over. Boyhood done. Driving off into the next stage of life. No, instead we get scenes at the frickin' college. Why? He meets up with his roommate, and roommate brings in two girls. One of the girls is apparently, I didn't realize this until later on, uh, the first asshole father, you know, had his son get, made his son get a haircut. Wow, he, he, he's, you know, okay, the mother didn't really want him to get a haircut, but it, it, it's a haircut. You're really going to get that upset over a haircut. Uh, but anyway, so a few of the kids in school are making fun of him for having the haircut, and then one girl passes him a note and says, hey, I really like your hair. It turns out that when this kid is like eight years old, this girl who passed some note ends up being one of the girls at the college. Now, my point in bringing that up is that, as I said, I didn't know that was the same girl at the time. It's been like ten years that have passed. I have pictures. I go to my grandmother's place every year for summer vacation. And she has pictures of all of her grandkids as they were growing up. And I have two cousins. She has pictures of them when they were about eight. And they were... I've seen them both recently. And they look nothing like those pictures. If you look close enough, you can say, okay, yeah, this is... You can still see some of the facial details, but you just, at a quick glance, which is all you really get in this film, I mean, you don't really... Kid grows up that much... There's going to, they're going to look different, unless you look really closely. And in a film, it doesn't really center 
there's nothing that really connects the two scenes, so how do you know right offhand that that's supposed to be the same girl? <sighs> really just makes me hate this film more thinking about that. But they meet up with these two girls and they go to a ravine that apparently is the same ravine they were at at the beginning of this film. But again, boyhood's over when he goes for college. Why are we spending these time with these other people we only just really met? We've never really seen their story before. What the fuck is the point? Uh, okay. Rant about boyhood over. I did not like it. If you did, fine. It, this is all opinion. I can only tell you how I related to the film in that I really didn't. <sighs> I was kind of so wound up after I saw that that I had to go see Guardians of the Galaxy again. I fucking love that film. Um, anyway, I think I've rambled enough. I'll talk to you later, folks. Uh, look for the video with me and Gary... Probably sometime this weekend, if not early next week. Bye, folks. Bye for now.